All right, so this is just gonna be a quick video um, showing how to replace the hard drive and the RAM on this ASUS Model K43E. All right, so first thing you're gonna wanna do is pull these two tabs to the side, just like this, all right? This one stays out, this one is spring-loaded, so you have to keep holding that. Once you do that, you can get your fingernail here or use the rough area here to pull the battery out, just like this, all right? Once you do that, you're gonna to wanna to remove the two screws here. The customer already had the two screws missing here, but I'm gonna assume that they were PH1 or JIS1 screws. Once you remove these two screws, um, you do wanna keep the screws in order because they are different sh size, shapes, and lengths. But once you remove those two, you can grab these and you can use that to help you pull the cover down. Once you pull that down, you can lift that out. All right, there's four screws securing the hard drive with the caddy in place. Remove those. Again, make sure you keep the screws in order. The way I do that is I put them with the flat side down like this, and I will put them on my desk in the layout that I remove them. So these are kind of in a rectangular pattern. So I'll just put them in my on my desk like that. So you have like that kind of square shape. Okay, so we're gonna do that. All right, so I'm gonna set these aside. All right, once we do that, you can grab this tab here. There's a plastic tab, lift that up, and then you slide this back, all right? Once you slide that back, you can pull the whole hard drive out. We are gonna upgrade this to an SSD. This is a two and a half inch SATA hard drive. So we're just gonna remove the four screws here. These are also PH1 or JS1 screws. Again, try and keep the screws in order, um, but I'm gonna take these screws out and put them back right away. So. I don't really need to put them in that pattern layout. All right, so we're just gonna remove all these screws here. All right, now that you got all four screws out, oops, where'd the other one fell somewhere? Okay, I'm gonna have to look for that screw. So I'm gonna put the screws aside. Anyways, um, we're gonna plop the hard drive out and then you just get the replacement drive or the SSD. I don't recommend using spinning drives anymore unless you're doing something that reads and writes to the disk lots and lots of times. SSDs are much better um, in almost every single way except for that the read and write um, is limited. Eventually it will run out of read and write cycles. But for most use, um, if you're not doing like heavy like data reading and writing um, kind of like a server, then SSDs will be a lot better. All right, so anyways, you just put the hard drive in this and we're going to put the screws in. All right, just like that. I have to find that missing screw, but anyways, tighten in all four screws. Let me find that screw real quick after I get these three in. I didn't see where it fell to, so it can be anywhere. Did it fall in here? There we go. All right. Let's get the fourth screw. Tighten that in. All right. And it's very easy to reinstall the drive. Just do what you did before. Start with it back here. Drop it in slowly. You can do it at an angle too, like this. And then make sure these two legs end up on top. Slide it over and then push that into place. Once you get it pushed in, we're just gonna put the four screws back. Oop. That's how you know you have the right size screwdriver. <laughs> the screwdriver tip gets stuck in the screw itself. All right. Make sure to check if your screwdriver doesn't um, uh, tighten and stuff well. Like you wanna make sure your screwdriver doesn't pop out of the screw. I've had several people using the wrong size screwdriver and damage their screws, and then it becomes really difficult to replace. All right, this is the wireless card. I do, I show this on every video, um, on all my other videos. There's one screw here. It'll pop up at an angle. You'll see like the RAM, the RAM here. You just pull these two to the side and it pops up. And then you can pull the stick of uh, RAM as well as the wireless card out once it goes like that, all right? Just like this. So you can see the RAM, it's kind of dusty. I'm gonna clean this up, but it's PC3 10600S. So that's what you want, PC3 10600S. Clean the dust off of this. I'm gonna clean these off. They're really dusty, so I'm actually gonna take both of them out and clean them up. 
we'll pop this out and check this is DDR3 uh, 13 uh, 33 1333 so you can use different size RAM this stick of RAM looks pretty bad I don't know if you can see there's like junk on it so I'm gonna try and clean it off it could be this caused corruption to the hard drive when it tried moving data back and forth um, it's not really cleaning off too well but I'm gonna brush this dirt off all right Right, so usually I just kind of wipe the pins like this to get it cleaned. Make sure that you're grounded so that doing this doesn't cause static to build up. If there's random junk like that, take that and throw it away. All right, so hopefully this the RAM should be okay. It was having a boot NTLDR message, so we're going to have to actually um, fix reinstall Windows because the repair methods that we tried didn't work on this. Anyways, we got the two sticks of RAM back in. Um, if you needed to take anything else out, then you'll basically have to take the whole computer apart. Um, let's see if the keyboard... The keyboard looks like you might be able to remove it from the top, but the customer didn't need that to be done, so I'm going to leave that alone. I don't want to risk messing anything up. I don't know if these screws are holding it in place, but it does look like it has the clips where you would basically use a thin pry tool where it has these little notches here and you can actually pop this up. I have other videos that show these kinds of keyboard removal removals. Um, usually to find out if there are screws in it, I'll look for the keyboard with the model number and then I'll try and find pictures of the back. And using the pictures of the back, I can see if there are screw holes or screw mounts anywhere. But anyways, to put this cover back, you just have it slid down slightly like this, drop it in and then slide it up. All right, I might have to find some screws for them here because this thing will like slide off and fall out by itself or put some tape there. But let's see if I got some screws for that. You have to be careful because you don't want screws that are too long. So I'm going to try with some short ones first. Okay, and that didn't seem to work. That seems too loose. So let's pop that back out. Oh, it's kind of stuck in there. I'm going to have to use a magnet. Okay. There we go. All right, so we got that. We're gonna need a longer screw here. Let's see. I don't want one that's too long. I'll just put, let's see if just one will go. All right, so let's see. And that screw doesn't go in either. So I don't know if somebody broke this and the screw mounts don't work anymore. Maybe that's why they just taped it. Yeah, these screws aren't like holding in place there. Oh, there we go. Okay, so it needs like, oh no, actually, that didn't even work. Can I take that back out? Yep, that didn't even work. All right, so let's try this side. Nope, I guess somebody just broke the screw mount, so I guess we'll leave it like that. We'll probably just put some tape or something on it, because that's how they had it before. What I'm gonna do, I when I put tape on anything, I like to fold over a portion of it to make a little pull tab here, so that way when you stick this on, you can actually like just peel this up if you wanted to, okay? So we're just gonna put that there. All right, and then we'll just put the battery back. So to put the battery back, you just slide it back on like this, okay? Just get it lined up, slide it in, right? Make sure both sides are in, lock this back. This should already latch back on its own, and that's pretty much it. Um, if you put a new SSD in there, you are going to want to do a clean install of the operating system or you can actually clone the hard drive to the SSD or replacement hard drive beforehand. I have videos showing that. So if you wanted to see that, if you can't find the video, just post a comment in the comment section below and I will send that video to you guys. All right, thanks for watching. Hopefully it helped you. If it did, please like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can also work on their devices and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.